Hi, in this video I'll be showing you how to set up a Shopalite application server. Once the application server has been set up with its connections to various databases, clients can then be installed and these clients will have remote connections to the application server. There's quite a few steps in the process, but the first step would be to set up SQL Server and a Shopalite database. There is a free version of SQL Server. If you don't have SQL Server already, just make sure that you get SQL Server Express with the management tools if you do download it. So let's go to the database server and I've started up Management Studio. The first step is to create a Sharper Light database on the database server. So just selecting new database. By default, I should call this Sharper Light, but it could be called anything. So I'll create a database called Sharper Light, and later on when we connect to this database, Sharper Light will automatically create the tables that are required. So I've created the database. The next step is to create a user under the security folder and give this user access to both the Sharpalite database and also the target system. In this case, it will be Great Plains. So I will call the user Sharpalite and it will be a SQL Server authentication and give it a, a password. Under user mapping, you should give Sharp, the Sharpalite account that you've just created and DBO access to the Sharpalite database. It just requires read-only access to the Great Plains database. If it's a different system, um, please adjust the permissions accordingly. Now I've created my account, the next step is to install Sharpalite. You can see here on the server, I have a MSI, which I can launch, and I also have two setup exes. These setup exes, uh, depending on whether you're running 32 or 64-bit windows, will check for prerequisites and automatically download and install them if required. In my case, I know that I have the prerequisites, so I'll kick off the install directly. During the install process, you'll be prompted to select whether you require a Sharpalite database and a demonstration environment. We've already created the Sharpalite database, so, so we can leave both of these unticked. I'll leave the install directory as is, and next. Next, you should see the data model installer. This is where you can install the data model for the target system. In this example, I'm installing Dynamics Great Plains. So I've already downloaded the data model to my file system. And now I have an opportunity to add this data model. If you miss this stage and go next, you can always recall the data model installer and do it later. Click on the Add button and browse for the data model that's been downloaded. In my case, I've put it in C temp. You can tell that it's a data model because the file extension is .meta. You can see on the display that we now have access to system where Shopalike keeps its reports and user details and the system Dynamics GP. If you had more systems that you wanted to connect to, for example, Xaptor or CRM or Asset Management System, you can keep on downloading data models and adding them to the list. Let's proceed to the next stage, which is defining the connections to the databases. Once you have the correct connection details, press the test button. This is the first time Sharpalite is connecting to the Sharpalite database, so it's inquiring whether we should install the tables. Answer yes. This completes the setup of the Sharpalite database. Next, let's proceed to Great Plains, and I've entered in the database details for Great Plains, and I'll test that connection. It's all successful, we press OK and complete the install process. Once this is done, you should find in the shortcuts menu a sharper light and a series of shortcuts. The most important ones for the application server will be the client setup where we define the connection details 
the data model installer for adding new versions of data models or additional data models in site setup. This is where we create new users and apply the licenses to the system. Let us proceed to step five, which is setting up the users and applying licenses. From the shortcuts menu, select site setup. If your connection details were invalid, you'd be thrown back into the client setup window. By default, there's an account called admin. It doesn't have a password at this stage, but we can apply one later. Let's log in. And you can see that we have no licenses for Microsoft Dynamics GP. The first step would be to apply the license by clicking on the import button and then browsing for the license file. I'm going to skip, skip this step and just leave the server in demo mode. Depending on which data models are installed, there may be settings to be applied. This will be under product settings. If I have a look at users and user groups, you can see that there are some default user groups and users that have been created. These are not Windows groups, but we can add them. So let's add the account that, I, that I've currently logged in as under the application server and give it admin rights so that I don't have to sign in as admin and remember the password. So I'll just go right click new user and change the username to browse for the current account that I've logged in as, which is this one here. I'll change the setting for administrator and you can see that now it's blue. What I'll do is I'll log out of site setup and start site setup again and this time I should go straight through. I'm doing this test before I delete the admin account just in case something goes wrong. So now this account's been trusted and I don't need to log in. I can disable this account. The next step would be to create a series of Windows account users or named users uh, and they can also be Windows groups so that you don't have to set up lots of users. Once you've applied the licenses and set up some accounts, the next step is to go back to client setup. This is where we define more details about what the service is going to look like. Here are our connections that we created before and under the icon services we have a number of blank slots and we can enable the first one. This will be what our service will be called. Let's change the description and call it demo site sharper light. There are two sets of connection details. One is for the API which is used by Excel and the rich client. The other one is used for delivering the web content. By default it goes out on port 80. For the API by default it uses 4001. If you require Windows authentication and single sign-on in the browser under the authentication option change the default to NTLM. If you do this it means that only Windows accounts that have been set up in site setup will be allowed into the system. If you want users to be able to log in with Windows accounts or plain named users, leave it as default. Let's start the service now and test it. There are two ways to start the service. One is to go to Windows services and start the service called Sharper Light. The other way is to start the service from this icon here called service. I'm using this method because it gives me the URL address so that I can at least test the website to see if everything is okay using the shortcut. I have a link down the bottom here. If I click on this link it will take me to the main landing page of the service. If there was some issue with connection details because the account under which the service is running is not trusted by the database. I'll see some sort of connection error up the top here. If the landing page looks like this then everything looks okay at this stage. Now I'll stop the 
manual servers and I'll switch over to the Sharpalite service and I will change the options to have this automatically started up when the server starts. You can see here you can also specify the account under which the service runs. I'm just going to right click and start the service and if I refresh this page it should still work but this time we're running under the service account details and you can see here that all our connections are correct. We're now ready to move over to the client install. For this video to demonstrate the application server and the database server and the client I've used different colors. In the background I've got purple which is my database server, blue which is my application server and finally green which will be my client. So next I will install Shopalite on the client. The installer is exactly the same as the MSI I installed on the application server. I'll click on the installer and just as before go through the next 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 steps. Just as in the case of the application server we've thrown into the data model installer on the client install. No data models are required on the client as we're going to be connecting to the application server. So click next here. In client setup you'll notice that the local connection will be enabled by default. Because we're connecting to an application server, the local connections should be disabled. This is very important. Under remote connections, go to the first empty slot, which is remote service 1, and let's enable this connection. And under the server name, enter in the application server name or IP address. I haven't changed the service code or the port number. So I'm going to leave these as they are. Let's press test now and if the service is up and running on the application server you should see this message which is asking us to do a performance test. This will just measure how quick your network is as the remote connections are possible over Wi-Fi, the internet and also over the intranet. You can see that my performance is 251. Now we can enable the connection make sure that they both have green for remote and disabled for local. That completes the connection details for the client setup. Now we can do a test to see if the client's been set up correctly. Under the all programs there should be a sh sharper light for shortcuts menu and to do the test we'll use query builder this will confirm that the connection between the client and the application server is correct. If I had set up an account on the in site setup on the application server to trust my Windows account, I wouldn't have to sign in here. So I'm just going to use the default account guest to sign in. This is the query builder, and you can see from the product selection I have a connection to the demo site Sharpalite and there are two systems I can access, System and Dynamics GP. If I select Dynamics GP, I can then s select the company and then start writing a report. So this side looks like everything's working. You can see here that I haven't applied a license. If I was to apply a license at this stage, I'd have to restart the service. The next step will be to set up the Excel add-in on the client. Start Excel and go to File options. Under add-ins go to manage Excel add-ins and select the go button. Then you can browse for the Shopalite add-in. The Shopalite add-in will be under the install folder th that we installed. In my case it's program files, filelight, Shopalite, bin and then I have a choice between a 32-bit add-in and a 64-bit add-in. Because I'm using 32-bit Excel, I'll choose the 32-bit add-in. Once I've done this, I should see a ribbon appear in Excel with all the Sharpalite functionality. Just as a test, 
I'll pull back some data from Great Plains into Excel. I'll select the table, I'll log in. In the Query Builder, we'll do a quick query just to test Excel to confirm that everything's working. I'll select a general ledger table, for example, and set some criteria and output some values. I've output the account, period and amount. I can preview the data. Everything's working OK. Press OK and the data is returned into Excel. That complete the test for the Excel add-in. Next, let's confirm that the browser is working. Launch Internet Explorer, Chrome, Firefox. It doesn't really matter which type of browser you have. And let's enter in the URL address for the application server. I've just pasted it in. It is the application server and in this case the code was ND service one then rest and slash index. This should get you us to the main page. The first link will list all the published reports that are on that service. For more details on setting up servers and clients please refer to the installation manuals. This concludes how to set up a Shopify application server.